Hello everyone, it's Tails from Studio Wildfear here, here with a brand new uh, demonstration of how to access your uh, token rewards or the Studio Wildfear Virtual Tabletop Token Packs uh, via Moulinet, the Moulinet plugin for Foundry VTT. Uh, so let's jump straight in. Now I've created a test scene and how to access your tokens. So assuming that you've got the Moulinet plugin installed and activated, so what you would do is you go to Manage Modules and activate Moulinet Core plus all of the extra bits and pieces, which are, so for example, game icons, image search, screens, uh, sounds and sound pad, and the most important one, Tiles module. So make certain they're all running, press Save, now I've already got them running so I don't have to save it and reload. Now what you, how to access the panel in our controls over here, go down to the bottom, the little Moulinet icon with the little hammer, then we want to go down to this icon here, Moulinet Tiles and Tokens. Click that and it will load this panel. Now there's a whole heap of other uh, sections such as icons, image search, prefab, uh, scenes and sounds. Um, they've, they're full of lots of really cool content from other creators but we are only interested in tiles and tokens down the end here. So click on that then what you want to do is click on this drop down and search for one of these Studio Wild for token packs. So let's go and have a look at the Roman tokens. So we can find here Studio Wild for Roman tokens. And here we go. Here's the content. So we've got the Roman Centurion, we've got the Roman Centurion Spearman. Now, and as you can see, if I click, so there's, there's a couple of ways that you can view this. So I'm just viewing it as the folder list. And when you click on the folder list, it shows you the content of that folder. You can view it uh, this way where it, or each folder is automatically displayed or just as a giant jumble. Um, I don't recommend using the giant jumble simply because it's like finding you know, a needle in a haystack. You, you see the entire contents of the pack all jumbled together. I like to use this way uh, because you can simply go, yep, I just want the Roman Legionary. Click, there it is. Now, to use the tokens, I'll just make this window a little smaller. So there we go. Now, there's a little trick to using the tokens, and I'll just get to my actors panel. So, let's just say we're creating a centurion, a Roman centurion. So we're going to, we're going to start with the Roman centurion. So here he is. Now, the first thing we want to do is come down the bottom to this line here, where it says drop as and then it's got a selection, tile, article, or token asset. We want to click on token asset because we want to drop it as a token asset. Next thing we want to do is on the end here, change that. It's usually 100 or 100 pixels because that's what a lot of people use as their, their grid size. I use a grid size of 180. So change it to 180. Make certain it's, it's highlighted as token asset and then so that means that it will drop as a token asset. If you had, say, tile highlighted, it will drop as a tile. So make certain you've got token asset highlighted. Find the asset you want to use, say, for example, uh, uh, this one here. Drag and drop into your scene. And it will bring up this option menu. So it's pretty simple. Two part. Create as a new token actor or reuse existing actors. So if, so, I've already got two actors here. I've got a Roman peasant and I've got an assault bot. So I could, if I wanted to, basically use this token in one of those pre-existing actors, I could select it from this box here to insert that token reference or that token art reference into the blueprint token for that actor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new token. So this will create a new actor. So let's let's create him as a character and we'll go create character. Yep, and there he is. 
Now, by default, it gives it the the name of the token artwork. So in this case, it's Centurion Double O, uh, so, uh, Roman Centurion Double O Double Two. So it could, it, you know, could could be um, uh, what you know, whatever the token artwork is. So it's placed him on the map, but we don't want to we don't want to use him. So what we're going to do is we're going to oops, go into our character sheet. We're going to go into our prototype token because we want to configure our prototype token so it's the right scale on the map. Go into appearance. Now, because this is one of my uh, uh, medium creatures or, or just, you know human-sized creatures, they, they use a dimensions or grid squares one by one. They use a token scale of two. Now I'll show you why that's important in a moment. So we just change that to two, and it's pretty much right to go. Update token. So now when we draw him out onto the tabletop, and I just zoom in, yep. he is now the correct scale. Now this is also a good chance for me to show you why why we need to set his scale to two instead of one to one. The reason is is that the artwork is actually bigger than the the map grid square that he's sitting inside. See how the artwork for the sword is poking outside the grid square? So that's why. So the token artwork is actually quite larger. It's actually double the size of a of a standard character square. That's so that we can get all of the the artwork of the dynamic pose in in the character. So just to go over that again, go to the character sheet, go to prototype token, appearance, dimensions, one to one, because it's a normal, you know, it's a medium sized creature, scale ratio, two, and oh, we're done. Update token, so that when you drag him onto the tabletop, boom, he's now the correct size. So that's that's one way you can create a, a and that creates a brand new actor, with, which is linked to the token. So you could also say grab this one, drag it onto the tabletop. You know, let's go. Okay, let's create a NPC, and we're going to click on create actor and link. Now again, he's the wrong. See how he's too small? It's actually squishing the artwork to the size of that that character square. So what we want to do, just get rid of him. Go into this fellow, prototype token, appearance, one to one, change this to two, whoops, wrong way, Oop, two, and he's now the correct size. And boom, there he is, perfectly fine. Now, the really cool thing about this is that now that we've set the, that blue uh, blueprint token information in this character, if I grab this guy, you know, this token, and I reuse existing actor, and I attach it to that same guy, now it's placed it onto the, the tabletop, but it keeps the size information from the from the blue blue blah, 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 from the blueprint. <laughs> so that information retain, is retained even though we've changed the token that we're using. Now, with so my medium-sized creatures are all pretty much um, uh, have a scaling size of two. Some of them are a little different. That's why I put in the file name. So if you see here, Roman Centurion dash two in brackets, that's the scaling. So that's the scaling size. So if you look here, you'll see Roman Centurion dash Spearman bracket three. Now that means that his his artwork is even larger. So if I just grab him, put him on the tabletop, I'll create a new NPC, create actor. So if we come in here, come to the prototype appearance. So he's one because we've just created him. He doesn't have it have it correctly set up. We change him to three. Update. Put him on the tabletop. 
there he is. He's sized correctly. And the reason that he's, si he's larger is that the spear goes way outside of just a normal double size um, of the image. So it had to be three times the size of the image to make it the correct scaling. So when you get to... So that's how you do characters. So you always have a look at the... Have a look to see whether... Like if it, if it doesn't quite look right, have a look at the number on the end of the, fo of the folder name and you'll probably see that the number might be a, you know different than a 2. Most human sized characters are a 2. If you get to things like the vehicles, so if, let's have a look here, our War Machines token pack. Yes. So this vehicle, so let's use the uh, jungle assault bot. Now this is where the vehicles are a little different. If you have a look at the folder name, so assault bot, then, he's, then it has 3 times 3 dash 2. Now what that means is 3 times 3 is how many grid squares the model takes up. So this is taking up 3 by 3 grid squares. 2 is the scaling factor once you place it. So if I grab this guy, plonk him there, I'm going to create him as a vehicle. Create actor and link. There we go. So as you can see, it's the wrong size. So let's just delete it. Go to our blueprint appearance. So we change dimensions, grid squares, three by three. Change it to then the scaling to two. There we go, two. Update token. And when I draw him out, there we go. He is now the correct size in all of his large majesty. I hope you have a lot of fun playing with the tokens. Now, oh, one last thing. If you want to use wildcard tokens, so this is where, so for example, with this assault bot, we want to have, we want to be able to, every time we draw it in, we're going to get the same token. But let's just say I want to create an army of assault bots. So, what we want to do is we want to preload each of the tokens we want to use for that army. So you click on it, oh, sorry, double click on the token. This little preview will pop up. Then we click on download. And that will load that artwork onto your system. Eventually when it shows up, I think my it's been a little slow for me at the moment because I'm streaming. Yep, here we go. So download. Oh no, it's actually sending it to the clipboard. So you just preview it. Just click on it to preview it. It'll download it to your system. basically like pre-caching it. Now, when we come over to to our uh, assault bot, go to its prototype token, go to its appearance, let's get rid of these. Now we can go into its image file path, go to the number here, because each in this group here, they're all called assault bot, jungle, then a number. So take the number out, put with the star, and then check this box here for randomized wildcard images. Then hit update token. Now, assuming I've done everything, everything right, each time we drag, yep, each time we drag a copy of the assault bot onto the tabletop, we should, it should be using a different image. Yep, there we go, there's a crashed one. Zoom out a bit. And it will use each image that's been preloaded into that folder. So if I go and grab this one, and then this one, and let's have the two crashed ones as well. There we go. 
So if I go on, I'll get rid of these. So now each time I drag them out, we should get a few, a few more variations of the assault bot. Yep, there's the crashed one. Oh, it's not doing it for me. Oh well. But yeah, you, you get the idea. <laughs> that is how to access uh, your token uh, token packs via the Moolinet plugin within Foundry Virtual Tabletop. You get access to the token packs via your Patreon membership for Studio Wildfur. Now, Moolinet, the Moolinet plug plugin, you don't need to have a uh, paid membership for that unless you're using the Moolinet cloud services. Um, if you're just using it to access, you know, my token packs, it'll be, you know, the plugin will be free. Um, I do recommend, you know, uh, subscribing to Moolinet uh, because your dollars will help uh, just just the same as your dollars in your subscription help me uh, keep doing what I'm doing your dollars will help keep uh, the Moolinet system developing going along so I definitely do recommend um, subscribing to them but if you just want to access my gear it's you don't need to have a secondary subscription just to access my gear through Moolinet Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe, smoosh those buttons, bang that bell. Thank you very much.